Was gibt's denn noch? Da ist jemand. Wo? An der Tür. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the horror movies that could theoretically take place in real life. You have a vacancy. Oh, we have 12 vacancies. 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. Number 20, don't breathe. There's nothing a man cannot do once he accepts the fact that there is no God. The premise of this film is quite simple, but then again, the scariest movies are often the simplest. A group of delinquents break into a blind man's house, learning that he received a large sum of cash after a legal settlement. The only problem is, this man is a Gulf War veteran, and he is extremely dangerous. Naturally, he doesn't take too kindly to some punks breaking into his house, and the thieves are forced to defend themselves. Of course, there's a major twist near the end that's a bit fantastical, but for the most part, Don't Breathe tells a pretty realistic story about some people trapped in a house with a trained killer. Where are you going? We're not doing this one. Seriously? Number 19, Frozen. No, not the Disney movie set in the fictional country of Arendelle. This one came three years before, and it is much scarier. The sun feels good. First we're freezing, and now we're gonna get summer. Be careful what you wish for, right? Dan, Parker and Joe are hitting the slopes when they learn that the resort will close owing to an incoming storm. Wishing for one last ride, they convince a ski lift operator to let them back up. Another operator shuts the lift off, and the group is left stranded high above the ground with no one coming to help. If you've ever been skiing, you know how high these things go, and you know how terrifying this prospect is. It's such a simple premise, but oh so horrific. Hey! Turn the goddamn lights on! Number 18, Red State. How much you think a cross like that costs? You mean the dollars are common sense? Oh, zing. Kevin Smith is best known for directing comedies, but he took audiences by surprise with his shocking and terrifying look at Christian fundamentalism. Although not devoid of its dark humor and scathing satire, this film is no laughing matter. In the days when religious extremism was unjustly focused on the Middle East, right-wing Christian groups such as the Westboro Baptist Church, a direct inspiration for the movie, were on the rise. This film was a wake-up call to Americans, a controversial one at that and made everyone realize that terror and extremism can reside in your own backyard and even in your church. People just do the strangest things when they believe they're entitled. But they do even stranger things when they just plain believe. Number 17, X. In fact, I don't much like the looks of none of y'all. And my wife is next door, so I would appreciate a little discretion. In 2022, Ty West wowed horror aficionados with the double bill X and its immediate prequel, Pearl. The film is an intentional throwback to the gritty slashers of the 70s, with a group of young people making an adult film. They do so on the property of Howard and Pearl, an elderly couple who agree to host the filmmakers in their guest house. Well, they don't make for the most welcoming hosts and begin systematically eliminating the young visitors. The premise is quite realistic, as are the couple's motives centered around morality, youth, and jealousy. We'd almost feel bad for Pearl if she wasn't, you know, a serial killer. I was young once too. I was taken right before the first war. Number 16, Hush. Who was that? Behind you. I thought I saw something move. Everyone loves a good home invasion thriller. After all, it's one of the most realistic scenarios for a horror movie. This one puts a nice twist on the age-old concept, starring a protagonist who is both deaf and mute. She is Maddie Young, an author who lives an isolated life in the woods. She is then targeted by a masked man who seems intent on getting inside and killing her. It's a terrifying scenario made all the scarier by the fact that Maddie can't hear her stalker. Seeing a face outside your window is one of those universal fears that we all share. Number 15, The Birds. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? 
Have you ever seen videos of people running away from attacking birds? Well, that's basically the plot of this masterpiece from Alfred Hitchcock. In it, a small California town is besieged by violent birds, who for some reason begin attacking humans. There is certainly a degree of fantasy to the film, but the idea of birds attacking us isn't as far-fetched as you may think. In fact, the movie was inspired by a real event that occurred in 1961. The birds around Capitola, California were suffering from the effects of toxic algae and began attacking the residents by pelting their homes and dive-bombing cars. According to one report, it seemed straight out of a horror movie. Well, here is that horror movie. What actually happened at the school? A bunch of crows attacked the school kids. It's the end of the world. Number 14, Green Room. Not this. You can't keep us here, man. You gotta let us go. We're not keeping you. You're just staying. This was one of the first A24 films to make a big splash, earning widespread acclaim and landing on many critics' best of the year lists. There's a reason for that. Great acting, great directing, and a simple premise. Sometimes that's all you need. A punk band plays a show at a neo-Nazi bar outside Portland, and one of the members witnesses a killing. He calls the police, but is caught by the skinheads, and the band are sequestered in the bar's green room. The owner then decides that they need to be killed, and the band are forced to defend themselves. Simple, effective, and above all, scary. The perfect ingredients for a perfect horror movie. It's funny. You were so scary at night. Number 13, Fatal Attraction. I just want to be a part of your life. Oh, this is the way you do it, huh? Showing up at my apartment! What am I supposed to do? You won't answer my calls, you change your number. I mean, I'm not going to be ignored, Dan. Erotic thrillers were all the rage in the late 80s and early 90s, and leading the pack was Fatal Attraction. Michael Douglas stars as Dan Gallagher, a New York lawyer who has an affair with Alex Forrest. Despite agreeing that this will be a brief fling, Alex becomes increasingly obsessed with Dan and turns to dangerous and manipulative behavior in order to have him for herself. This is a story all too common in everyday life, a scorned lover becoming intensely focused on the subject of their affection. And while Fatal Attraction adds some Hollywood flair to the proceedings, it is nevertheless rooted in a scary and relatable reality. So sad. You know that, Alex? Lonely and very sad. Don't you ever pity oh, me, I'll pity you. bastard. I pity you. I pity you because you're sick. Number 12, Audition. Look, I'm not just a I'm just a person who loves you. Just as erotic thrillers dominated the late 80s and early 90s, so too did J-horror dominate the late 90s and early 2000s. Takashi Miike's Audition is heralded as a horror classic, and its climax is one of the most frightening sequences ever put to film. Minus the whole audition aspect of the movie, its story is extremely down-to-earth. A lonely widower wishes to move on from the death of his wife and meets young Asami, whom he immediately takes a liking to. It's too bad that Asami is a psycho, and she subjects the poor man to some incredible acts of violence. The movie nicely captures the literal and metaphorical horror of blind dating. You never know who you're gonna get. <laughs> Number 11, The Silence of the Lambs. Be very careful with Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Chilton at the asylum will go over all the physical procedures used with him. Do not deviate from them for any reason whatsoever. A woman is abducted by a serial killer named Buffalo Bill, and an FBI agent has to find them. Doesn't get much more straightforward. And that's the main premise behind the masterpiece that is The Silence of the Lambs. Of course, there's way more to it than that, as Clarice is forced to consult with the dangerous cannibal Hannibal Lecter, who personally knows Bill and has valuable information on his psychology. Not only is the story realistic, but so too is the writing. Novelist Thomas Harris once worked as a a crime reporter and even based Lecter on a real man named Alfredo Bale Trevino, whom he met while conducting prison interviews in Mexico. That expires in one week. You're not real FBI, are you? I'm still in training at the academy. Jack Crawford sent a trainee to me. Number 10, Saw. What? Huh? This is what they do, man. They kidnap you and drug you. Before you know it, you're lying in a bathtub and your kidneys are on eBay. This franchise got increasingly ridiculous, but 
man, that first movie really packs a punch. A dark and gritty thriller, Saw is one of the most influential movies of the 2000s, launching a mega franchise and the careers of both James Wan and Lee wan -El. The success of the film can be largely attributed to its straightforward and effective story. Two guys are kidnapped and confined inside a dingy bathroom. If they want to survive, they need to resort to some extreme measures. While the series would eventually devolve into swinging pendulums and shotgun carousels, this movie is just two guys trapped in a room with nothing but a gun, a tape recorder, and a saw. He doesn't want us to cut through our chains. He wants us to cut through our feet. Number 9. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre You, you, you can have dinner with us. You like head cheese. My brother makes it real good. Serial killer Ed Gein might have inspired the story, but this film is entirely fictional. Of course, that doesn't mean it couldn't happen, and the opening crawl and crime scene footage cement the illusion that this could be a true crime story. Although today this Toby Hooper joint is famous for its graphic and brutal violence, audiences were unprepared for the realistic portrayal of the senseless killings of these teens. Although we can't prove there are any cannibalistic families living in rural Texas, we can assure you that driving around in creepy towns and walking into random houses won't end well. If I have any more fun today, I don't think I'm going to be able to take it. Number 8. Jaws $10,000 for me by myself. For that you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. The fear of man-eating sharks, a trend started by Jaws, is a tad exaggerated. As there have only been roughly a dozen confirmed attacks by great white sharks in the United States since the film was released. However, this doesn't mean that you won't be eaten alive when swimming in the ocean. The open water has always been a terrifying place, as there are a multitude of things that can hurt or kill you. Steven Spielberg and his brilliant mechanical shark took this idea and ran with it, striking gold. Its quiet little town setting struck a chord with audiences, making sure they stayed out of the water forever. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Number seven, The Strangers. I'm not a dog bark. Car, car pass. Nothing. Just us and them. A common theme we are seeing is that horror can manifest itself in unexpected, safe spaces. The Strangers not only covers the home invasion aspect, which has scared everyone at some point, but the possible danger of living in a seemingly quiet rural setting. While inspired by his own experiences, and some true home invasion stories such as the Manson family murders, director Brian Bertino's original story shocked audiences with its brutal message. As we watch young couple James and Kristen slowly realise that the horror is all too real, as they are being terrorised by masked figures at their summer home. We also start to realise we could be next. Why are you doing this to us? Because you're home. Number 6. Scream There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. While the improbable and ridiculous masked slasher craze died out in the 80s, the 90s became obsessed with true-to-life serial killers. We were also obsessed with blaming violent movies, music, and video games as the cause of real violence. Wes Craven saw this goldmine and gave us the modern classic Scream. This blood-soaked satire follows a group of teens obsessed with violent, over-the-top horror films. They end up becoming the victims of a masked killer that may be one of their own. Oh, and if you have any hope of surviving, you'd better be good at horror trivia. Name the killer in Friday the 13th. Jason! 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 I'm sorry, that's the wrong answer. Number five, the last house on the left. Why don't you just lay back and enjoy being in fear? Zoom off, you male chauvinist dog. We've already covered home invasion films, but this is the granddaddy of them all. The brutal realism of The Last House on the Left was so intense, the original poster and trailer kept reminding audiences it's only a movie. Once again, Wes Craven was ahead of his time in stoking fear in his audience, and while it may be only a movie, its real-life implications are disturbing. Who needs monsters and demons when you have a gang of perverted, demented criminals? Poor Mary and her friend learned the hard way not to talk to strangers. With the girls assaulted, beaten, and left for dead, Mary's family end up taking matters into their own hands in a bizarrely satisfying confrontation. What's the trouble, Doc? Shut your filthy mouth. 
Number four, Psycho. We have reason to believe that she came along this way, may have stopped in the area. Did she stop here? Well, no one stopped here for a couple of weeks. While the captured Norman Bates stares at us blankly, his mother's voice in his head lets us know he wouldn't even harm a fly. Up until Psycho, killers in cinema always had a strong motive, or they were simply brutal monsters. Norman Bates was an early depiction of mental illness, leading a psychopath to murder. Poor Norman was such a sweet young man, so innocent and polite. Nobody would expect that he's a peeping Tom, dresses up as his mother, and kills women while they shower. The true horror here is that none of us is safe from anyone, not even the nice boy next door. If, if you want anything, just, just tap on the wall. I'll, I'll be in the office. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bates. Norman Bates. Number three, when a stranger calls. Hello. Have you checked the children? Dr. Mandrakis? Urban legends make you squeamish for a reason. They're supposedly based on real events, and their job is to scare you into thinking this happened to a friend of a friend, and therefore could happen to you. When a Stranger Calls relies heavily on the urban legend of the babysitter being stalked by a killer inside the house, and succeeds in becoming a terrifying viewing experience for everyone. We watch as the innocent teenager is tormented by phone calls from a psychopath, children helpless in their beds, and we're reminded of how many times we've been home alone, not realizing someone could have been waiting for us upstairs. Leave me alone! Jill, this is Sergeant Sacker. Listen to me. You traced the call. It's coming from inside the house. Number two, Misery. Misery's return? I know you didn't mean it when you killed her, and now you'll make it right. This movie offers us a more outlandish premise. A series of bad events and happenstance lead unlucky novelist Paul Sheldon to not only crash his car, but to be rescued, nursed back to health, and then held hostage by his number one fan and deranged lunatic Annie Wilkes. And you might say to yourself that you're not a celebrity, but then you realize that, that almost everyone today can be found via social media. Being famous comes with its risks. And of course, Stephen King was thinking of his own status as a famous author when writing this. But any one of us could have a stalker watching us somewhere. God, I love you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, funny games. Guten Tag. Bitte entschuldigen Sie die Störung. Ich komme von nebenan. Home Invasion has been covered in so many movies, and it certainly is a chilling experience, but it's a whole other level of horror when you invited the evil into your home. Director Michael Haneke gave us the perfect monster movie by introducing us to the calm and polite Peter and Paul. As they're welcomed into George and Anna's vacation home, they decide to have some mischievous fun, which includes torture, torment, mind games, and murder. The family is inevitably punished for their kindness and hospitality, and we're taught never to answer our door for anyone ever again. Anna schickt mich. Heute Morgen sind überraschend Gäste gekommen und du lässt sie fragen, ob sie ihr mit ein paar Eiern aushüpfen könnten. Which of these horror scenarios would you least like to find yourself in? Let us know in the comments below. I think it's crazy. What's crazy? All that blood and violence. I thought you were supposed to be the love generation. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.